Good morning, afternoon, evening. It all blends together when you're shut in the house for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, welcome to Near Future Industries. We're bringing you the hope for the future using the technology of tomorrow today. And I'm joined with James, by James, by, not with, I'm joining James Azrael in his house as he is joining us here in ours. James, how are you doing this today? I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. You know, this is not bad. You know, I'm I'm a home person as it is, so, and I got friends everywhere, right? You know? All the good friends, all the all the heroes <laughs> yeah. and villains throughout time. Uh, yeah, man, I'm I, ready for the zombies. <laughs> yeah, you got all the best fi yeah. zombie fighting tools right. categorically, right? right except uh, most of them are, are rubber, so it doesn't really help that much. But well, it turns out that's what they did in all those movies where they were kicking yeah. so much zombie ass was rubber yeah. tools, and that's obviously it's the true. best. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I've I have. An AK right behind me, actually. <laughs> where where does where does that AK come from? Or is it just a general? If I can get it without knocking everything over. It looks like a dangerous stack. That's like this. That is a literal stack of dangerous <sighs> swords, maces. Um, so this is from Missing in Action. What? Chuck Norris. Yeah, this is one of the. Uh, this is a resin stunt. But... <laughs> Amazing. You know, I might get one one brain whack out of that before it shatters, but you know, hey, it's one, right? I love that movie as a kid. I love that movie as a kid. You know, like the very, uh, you know, nationalistic, jingoistic uh, military movies of the '80s and '90s. It was like one of the pinnacle movies, and you know, and even uh, uh, Uncommon Valor came out around the same time, and they had the same theme of recovering POWs and all that. So, what other what other weapons you got? So, you guns that don't fire, rubber swords, hand knives. These aren't just hand knives, though. What, what and, kind of hand and, knives are those? And they're not even Wolverines, if that those makes any sense to you. It does, because these... there's, there's multiple movies that, <laughs> that, that had Wolverine-style yeah. claws. So the character was Wolverine, but the movie was superhero movie. Ah. And this is actually from a deleted scene in the high school where Wolverine flicks somebody off. <laughs> In, in my memory, I feel like that wasn't a deleted yeah. scene. Like in my in my head, I'm like, I remember that for some reason. Or or I yeah, you know, and I gotta admit that the movie's not that good, so I haven't rewatched <laughs> it to uh to know whether it, it maybe it was added back in. But yeah, this is the full uh, animatronic uh, uh, wire. Oh wow! FX cloth device. So yeah. That's awesome. All that just to flick somebody off with some Wolverine claws. Hey, it takes a lot of effort <laughs> if you want to properly you know. float the bird on film. That's true. That's true. You know. Yeah. So you got it. You've also got a number of characters back there. So, so first of all, we're 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 talking about the the yeah. props and the, and the goods and all the beautiful things behind you. <laughs> but why do you have those things, James? That's the that's the real question. Why? Why? Well, it it started off as as collecting. You know, I'm I'm a professional collector if you will sure. <laughs> um and it it progressed um what year is it 2020 so that was about five and a half six years ago into starting a museum the hsppa the uh, horror and sci-fi prop preservation association so we're a non-profit traveling museum of screen news movie props and wardrobes we go all over the country and I am part owner with a bakery outside of Phoenix called Spooky's Swirls. It's all gluten-free. And we have a complete museum in there of movie memorabilia from the HSPPA. That's um, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Awesome. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. And how much and how, how did you start building your collection? I mean, like talking about going from, you know, an individual collector to a whole preservation society i mean that's that's a huge leap right like 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 wh 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 when did you know that this was going to start being a problem did you know you know what i mean <laughs> when i was five man when I, <laughs> when I was i think actually i was about six um i i i got a tri logo atst driver from return of the jedi and i left it in package at the age of six. Oh wow and i still have it so yeah, I knew, did, did you know, know something that somebody I, else didn't, or were you just like OCD? I don't want to do anything to this this beautiful toy. Some reason I knew the stuff was worth or gonna be worth money, or I I can't remember all of that. I just know that I I've 
kept it. You know, I, I got it up in Canada even and brought it all the way home and, <laughs> and still have it. So <laughs> amazing. Well, I don't, and I, I don't know that I've ever thought that any of this is a problem. Oh, of course, though. of course. I, I, I say that in <laughs> jest. Uh, because it's one of those things that I think that, you know, we, you know, we joke about our, our proclivities about how much it costs, like for, for me with video, that it's always like, how much money can I squeeze out of my beer budget to buy video gear? Right. And it's right. (laughs) And and I think, I think when you look at it on the whole, like, you know, that, that's a lot of stuff to, to have. And, um, you know, it sounds like with the, the preservation society growing, what's, how it has your technique of acquiring items, uh, have your routes of finding unique pieces changed over the years from buying oh, like, oh, KB absolutely. toys? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a, um, so the, the actual movie props I've been involved in since I, I want to say 2002, 2003, whenever like Jeepers Creepers 2 uh, came out, because that was my first actual screen use piece was from Jeepers Creepers 2. Um, so what's that lip? 18 years i think wow um so so it started it started on ebay you know and you just kind of discovered the stuff and and it just progressed from there and you start getting to know people and talking to them to the fx guys that actually make the stuff you know and and it starts coming to you um right and you get away from the auctions and and whatnot because especially doing this I, mean, I, I can't compete with collectors because, you know, it, it's it's really not even my collection anymore. You know, right. it's, I, I I love this this tagline. And I, I I jokingly call myself a communist collector uh, because <laughs> I collect for the people. Right. But yeah, I mean, there's there's so much I have that that's not stuff I would have gotten if I was just collecting as, as my own person. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I think well, a big part of that is obviously your relationships that you build up around yeah. through the time that you explore this, because, um, you know, you meet the people who are as passionate about it as you are, like you said, the creators and the other collectors and so on. Um, something that's interesting, you know, you know, as we're in this age where the internet becomes so important to our lives, I think that, you know, it's notable that you say it's eBay that kind of brought you to this because I think one of the great things about the internet has been that it'll bring people of certain niches together in ways that we couldn't do before. Like we were looking through the backs of magazines and things, trying to find those people near us. And then now yeah. it's like you can you can find your your tribe wherever you may be. Um, yeah, in, in yeah, society. absolutely. And And on that note of eBay, I, I highly do not recommend it anymore. <laughs> Um, as, as with every hobby, especially when, when it starts becoming more publicly aware, sure. when, when you have the press and Forbes and Wall Street Journal, everybody covering these auctions with, you know, $1.5 million lightsabers and, and yeah. things, it, it draws in the near do wells heavily. So, and there eBay is, is, is your always waiting in the wings. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, and it's so hard. Um, you know, there, there's no book. And even if there was, it wouldn't be effective. So like, you know, you collect baseball cards, you can look up a rookie Babe Ruth card and that's the cost, give or take a couple, you know, dollars or what. But even when you have the same thing, multiples of the same thing they're different and there's just no way of of evaluating that stuff so and and there's also really difficult in proving its um actualness it's it's uh you know used so yeah Yeah. it it gets pretty easy on ebay to to uh to pull one over (laughs) yeah yeah to to, to pull a fast one as it were and and, and so that goes that goes another question is how do you validate a lot of the stuff like is that a Sharknado cup? Did you just did you just drink out of a Sharknado cup? Oh my goodness! Amazing. Okay. All right. I'm jealous now. I, I <laughs> I'm drinking coffee out of my Thor mug. Nice. My, my, nice. my Milner mug, but I yeah. I'm I'm a little jealous of the Sharknado cup. I I have a Porg cup for my coffee. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah Porgs. <laughs> Por- 
the new the new cute yeah. of of Star Wars. Oh, I love them. I love them, man. Like Star Wars and birds, it's perfect for me. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, we hear that. We hear the birds in the background, yeah. so it's uh, it's a chocolate, peanut butter and chocolate for for yeah. James Azrael. Yeah. The um, speaking yeah, of speaking of Star Wars props, uh, and I see some stuff back behind you, um, <laughs> like and, and this is another big thing is is Star Wars being one of the biggest properties that you know kind of start a lot of people down this path and, and it did for you and i think for me like i was one of those kids that wanted to 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 play in the dirt and like i always had the, the you know the dirt plugs in the in the in the foot foot pedal pedestal holes yeah, yeah. right like yeah. i was i was that kid and like you know with all the yeah um so and then but you know i had friends who were much more like you who were like nah these are these are going on the shelf if they're out of the box they're on the shelf and they have their oh don't get me wrong i played with my figures i absolutely <laughs> played with them did you yeah. have like two sets like one for one for keeping no, no, it, it was only the ATST driver that I had kept in package. So it, it was maybe I was older than six. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it could it could have been well, to you know, that. There's yeah. one of those one of those things where you see something and you're just like, oh, it's beautiful. I'm not touching it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> so how do you validate when anymore? Like when you when you look at a piece because it seems like that's the, you're, you're exactly right. That's the that's the big danger, right? Like how do you how do you find out what it is that you know, when you have a piece in front of you and you go, okay, well, that's from this movie or that movie, and you're like, do you have to track, do you have, like, what kind of research and, and forensics do you have to do to make sure, absolutely sure that this is the right thing and that it's uh, screen used or not screen used or whatever? You use the the, the best term possible is forensics on that, which unfortunately is really difficult to do over a computer where most of this stuff is. Um so a lot, a lot of the research ends up getting done after you already have the item in your possession, which is unfortunate, you know, sometimes. Um, so let, let's back up. Uh, there's certain terminology for, for these pieces as you're going through. Um, screen used being the overall generic term that everybody just understands. From there, we have the production used, the uh, item that was in production and used somewhere in production. So the... Would that include like a maquette that they build something else off of? Or is it, are you are, are these things that okay, have so, to be... So technically that is production use. And in fact, I'm gonna show you one of those that was as I have here um, <laughs> to to, uh, to share with you today. Um, that would technically fall under like prototype. Okay. Um, or production made, uh, although I think prototype for like maquettes and whatnot is better. But yeah, it, see, see, it gets really grayer. There's so much gray area in, in all of this, and and how you justify where something fits. So, like a, a maquette used by a a CGI team, uh -huh. I feel is production used because that right. is the object that was then created into a computer because the physical art object that is modeled against the the 3d model that they build yeah right whereas in the practical world you've got your maquette still but that's just a, a 3d example that they then recreate in large form sculpting right. and re-sculpting and, and it usually changes a lot between the maquette and what they sure. produce in large scale and, and yeah, because there's all kinds of different variables, right? The materials that you're using yeah. is like you could carve something really nice and detailed the in clay that that yeah. Can, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the 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 person who's wearing the prosthetic yeah. might be a different shape. The materials yeah. might have to be a different shape because the size might have to accommodate some kind of weight bearing. Th you know, there's all kinds of yeah. situations that'll change. So, sure, so that would probably be a prototype, and I actually have one of those right here with me too, um, to share well, with well, you. Let's, so. let's, let's see, let's see yeah. some of those. Like, what's the example of a maquette okay. they would use? Um, and then, and then, and then, so going, and then, and while we're, while we're grabbing that, the, um, the one thing though, that I'd say is, you know, to finish the question off is that, uh, yeah. like when you're validating those different categories or those, those are kind of values though, like, okay. but, but the question was well, like, the it is, it is, like, but this you... is, yeah, okay. but that's, that's where the authenticity gets. And sorry, I get on these tangents. So yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's uh, <laughs> so the, the absolute thing is, is a screen match. Okay, and that's kind of where I went off with the, the terminology, but the screen match is your best authenticator. And that's, you see it on screen and there's something about it, some identifier. Uh, let's say it's a wardrobe. Um, 
maybe like a plaid shirt so the plaid has like a a string hanging off of it and okay. you, you can see that little inconsistency something that isn't mass produced that's okay. a flaw and you can identify that exact item on screen you know something right. that occurs naturally like something is burned something is, is bloodied and there's a drip formation anything uh, you know you had tom right. devlin on recently and i have a blade um puppet uh from uh i think it was access puppet master access uh, -huh. uh i'd have to check i don't right. have he, any... <laughs> he brought it he brought the puppet me. master series specifically but i, I wouldn't be yeah i'm not okay. an expert um, myself. i have a screen blade and it was matched because of the blood on his face so uh -huh. i i was able to screen match that so that would be your utmost authentic authentic uh way of doing it that there's no question about it unfortunately the rest of it comes from gut feeling sure <laughs> <laughs> you know um you got to rely on 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 the source that you're getting it from and their reputation right once in the hand you know you you kind of know what 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 five minute five year and 50 year old latex smells like or paint looks like <laughs> right or, and, and this comes down you know, to how, the experience yeah. of the assessor yeah right somebody who knows yeah. the industry knows the products knows the knows the items knows the the movies themselves knows the people involved in the making of them and and can validate yeah. any claims made by the owner and the holder of the product yeah yeah, yeah. so so yeah. uh what what so we're gonna let's get into some of these props because i think that uh, we also have a friend on the line uh, waiting to to visit yeah. with us, and I, and I think we, you, you, we're we're going to see something. Maybe he's got of yours. But what um, what do you what did you say? You had a maquette and a and a production prompt. Yeah. So so this uh, this little guy. What? Can you? Uh, does he come through? Yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to place it in my head. Uh, it looks familiar. Where would you see a sleeping pterodactyl? Uh, in Land Before Time, possibly. Well, okay, okay. Or, or yeah. dinosaurs? Okay. Dinosaurs? Flintstones? The, Flint, the Flintstones. Flintstones. Yeah, so this this was the maquette for uh, the Flintstones alarm clock, which turned out to not beat this when they actually made the, uh, the uh, CGI um, character for it, but or, or I, maybe there was an animatronic. <sighs> it's too much to figure out at the moment. But right, yeah, right, so, right, right. so this, this was the, but the original idea for it was, was this little guy. And this is based more off of what they used in the cartoon. So, sure. Sure. So they had a physical, yeah. so that, that, that a sculptor sit down and build that uh, yeah. maquette so that somebody could then make a 3D model that looked and had the characteristics and the, the kind of the, the, the life look of what that artist created in the first place, right? Because they're trying to make it look like yeah. a three D yeah. version of that two D animation. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And on the flip side, for the practical people, oh, oh hey, oh hey, I know this guy. <laughs> I know this guy. Swamp Thing is possibly one of my. I, well, one the the '80s movie is is a really just I love it's it's a, it's an ugly translation of the comics, but it's it is such a satisfying watch, and I, I must have saw, seen it the summer that it came on HBO. Um, like I think yeah. I watched it every time it came on. Like if I saw it come in the rotation, I would watch it like three times that day, and then like you know run outside and play in between showings. You know, like I love that movie. So is that is that from the movie or the TV show? Uh this is from from the first movie. That's but oh, this wow. is Bill Munn original maquette design for swamp thing and so this was the um, target that the that the practical effects artists were meant to build yeah. the the makeup towards to say look make it look like yeah make make that human being look like this right here right and and this is i think much more like the comic book at the time more yes um, yeah more, and I, and more I close think, more ape ape like but look at I, those eyes I know, right? Yeah. Like, like they, they, it's yeah. very human, and like, look at the teeth back there too. I mean, there's, it's. Yeah. I mean, it looks, wow. That I mean, you know, it has so much life to it, and I, you know, the, uh, 
the 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 movie was very different. I, you know, we, that, that that Swamp Thing is a, a fascination of mine. But like the, uh, the I think the movie was before they did a lot of the art style change, and and, and Alan Moore took over the story like right at the time the movie was coming out. So it was based on the previous um, Len Wayne storylines versus the Alan Moore storyline. So it was a lot more uh, comic style. So you see those clean lines. And then the later stuff was much more like Bernie Wright's in the art. But any, anyway, that's, yeah. my, that's my tangent for the day. Um, <laughs> but, but that's a beautiful right, piece. Right next right next to my computer here, I'm going to just try and sure. pan. I can't show you everything. But there's Swamp Thing's pelvis. What? <laughs> that's that's, I, a ju- yeah, that's his junk, a, literally. All right. It is. It is. And and there is a twig. Just so you know, there is a twig in there. Yeah. Th- those are uh, from <laughs> Return of the Swamp Thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I I dream of a day when when somebody picks that back up and it has some has some heart. Um. I, I have I have a mask over here. Too. I I just can't reach it all. So <laughs> yeah, the one that you have a fantastic yeah, collection there. And speaking of the collection yeah. and, and 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 associations and, and connections, uh, uh, we have somebody on the line. One Mister one, one Mister Nick. Let me let me uh, get him in here. So so Nick is part of the HSPPA. He actually is is one of those FX guys that I ran into because of collecting. I have a piece. Uh, from Nightmare on Elm Street 4, it's a soul puppet uh, that was on Freddy's right shoulder, and it reaches over a little rod puppet that, that is grabbing at, at Freddy. And I had posted it, and lo and behold, Nick sees it, and he posts on it a video of him puppeteering it. And from there, we just started talking about things, and, and he quickly got involved with what we're doing here and uh when we did a show out in phoenix he came out and 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 worked the booth with us and see if has been a strong supporter and now is a uh preservationist can you hear us can we hear you hi guys hey Hey, there he is (laughs) (laughs) so uh uh yeah so so nick um working with uh, uh james what uh you were talking earlier about some tentacles now I'm, my, my curiosity was peaked uh we were when we were when we were talking about, there was a there was a tentacle you were talking about my tentacle which is which has some implications i don't know i don't know what those are but if if, if i were to just, guess <laughs> tell me about your tentacle to, james he's just here to see your tentacle on a webcam i am a, i am yeah I, I am a nick benson stan it's totally true <laughs> so so Nick, Nick has, uh, after some urging over the years, has finally thrown his uh, his hat into the ring on doing prop preservation and restoration work. Um, so when he finally decided to do that, I have some tremors, a movie of which Nick worked on. I felt that the only person that should touch that is somebody that worked on the movie. Oh, wow. So I sent him my five foot tentacle <laughs> right here. The, it's, it's right uh, there against on the wall right right. here I'm, my, it's my one of the mouse tentacles on from the graboid um, <clears throat> and it's full rod puppet and just gigantic and um doesn't have COVID 19 so <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's free of disease it might have <laughs> it might have mutated life form <laughs> things on it that we don't know about yet that might cause some yeah. sort of, of malaise that we you know well that and decapitation dismemberment and all the other problems that come along with yeah, tabloids you know. but what um so so uh talking about the mm-hmm. preservation part of the the, the association um and then nick t- tell us a bit about like your experience uh you know how, how do you like what is the process for preserving some of these items like when you take something in like this do you like do you clean it up do you have to research anything like what's kind of like your step by step on something like that before the, before you do yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a conglomeration of all of that stuff you know you you have to take a look at what's there and usually the collector knows what they want done uh pretty well in james's case there's there's like some storage damage to the piece that you can't really see on the video obviously um but there is also you know uh, over time the stuff uh does degrade and and get wear marks on it and things like that as it's used but the you know there are certain parts of it that you don't want to take away you don't want to take away from its originality or its age 
Um, so with a piece like this in particular, there's like some, they had some tape or something on it uh, at some point and it took a little bit of paint off. So I got to go back and try to match all of that. Um, James also has me building a custom display stand for it. Kind of like wow. the one over here to my, my right. That's for a phantasm piece. <laughs> um, so is that like, like plexi you know, and, uh, and, and a nice headboard and things to show that what it is? Um, yeah, so there's, kinda, there's like a little identify there's it a, when they visit. One of the, yeah, one of the spheres from Phantasm 3 is to my right here, and it's it's in a case, and it's um, it was nothing more than a ball. I had to recreate the blades. I had to, uh, and and the, the owner wanted me to, to build in some tubing and stuff so it bleeds out of the drill bit that sticks out the bottom of it. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be doing that in its display. There's some LED lights and stuff. Yeah, you do like the reciprocating. Yeah. There is like a reciprocation pump. Right, right. It's, 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 yeah. Or those, yeah. those fountains. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. yeah. where you got the chocolate fountain, fountain, fountain blood, the cheese fountain, the and the blood fountain. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, it just depends on what they want done. Like I, I, I recently also did a piece from It Chapter 2 uh, for one of the HSPPA members. Um, it was, and, and I wound up doing that research and screen matching as much as I could to something that I oh. could find to make sure it was a piece from it. So you, what you, that, James? however, yeah. not only you, you not only matched it, but you matched the life cast to yes. some behind the scenes stuff, which is to the behind the scenes stuff that ADI had <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. they had released and it had that piece on that on that life cast wow. yeah. matched by the the extra paint that was all over it and stuff so 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 out of curiosity yeah. you know going into you know talking about the process of res restoration i mean you're talking about the having to do the blades and everything else that kind of like sparks a couple of, of curiosities in my head is one is james like how how often do pieces come to you and just like it just looks like tragedy to you you're just like oh my god like what has happened to this thing um and then Secondly, and then I and then I guess the follow-on question would be for Nick. After that, would be, um, and then when you take something on like that, is there, has there ever been anything where you're like, yeah, it's we'd just basically be rebuilding a, a new prop at, at this point, or yeah, we actually have a piece we've been discussing doing exactly that with. If you, James, if you want to take the, the lead on thing. that, <laughs> yeah, no, you're talking thing. about swamp. Oh no, I'm talking about barf. Oh oh, <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> I don't. I have some pieces right here, but not not the ear. Okay, so <laughs> with with <laughs> let me answer your question first. Um, wait, which, which was your question? Okay. Which is how often does something arrive in a state where you're just like, oh my goodness, okay. like I don't know, like this is just a pile you know, of kind of you know deteriorated latex. I don't know what to do with this. I I take a lot of things in um, because I, I I think everything needs to be saved, but unfortunately some things are not <laughs> savable. Sorry, there must yeah. be a robin in the yard. <laughs> the, the she Prince really dislikes robins. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know it. Oh, okay, so that's very that's fine by the way that, like i think i think viewers all understand that you know we're all at home right now and and you know anybody watching this should, should be uh <laughs> you know, sensitive to that so that's fine <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so you know okay i uh, are you familiar with the movie baby secret of the lost legend i, I know i've heard the title i just can't it, it, 1984 disney movie with william cat and sean young uh, they're in Africa and they discover a family of brontosaurus. Yes. And yeah, they're I, trying to save them from poachers and yes. they're protecting the little baby. So um, one of our HSPPA people that hunts props, uh, he found uh, a guy that used to work in Disney and in his garage were these old pieces from baby, including a maquette and an animatronic skin and the animatronic skin uh, face skin came looking like a deflated football and due to the fibers and the latex it, it was it's hard as a rock and and just 
you know. Um, but I, I sent that off to uh, Tom Spina, who do, also does things, and, and he was able to expand it and bring it back to what it what it used to look like. In fact, I think I, I can turn this just enough to to show you what it looks like now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It's just like Hubert. Hubert behind there. <laughs> yeah. Well <laughs> and there and there's Qbert too. So <laughs> um <laughs> Qbert. And so that was a piece that I, I thought was completely gone um, just due to the materials and the extreme, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's hard as, you know, yeah. I didn't think anything would come of it. So it's hard to say anything is completely lost. And what, what Nick referred to with barf is I have barf from Spaceballs. So all of, all of John Candy's gloriousness. Wow. And his ears completely deteriorated. Um, so it's it's just dusty orange latex and and, and because there, there's a, there was a lot of you know placed hairs in there that were you know a, yeah a, and it's a, all you stuck it's just in a with box a, of adhesive hair. that over time would probably just deteriorate. And we're talking about decades mm -hmm. of time. Then and then yeah. those hairs fall out. So those ears have to be completely recreated and not just recreated, but the hairs are different colors. There's a pattern to how the hairs go on. So, wow. yeah, I mean, right, that, that's he, a project. He had that like calico <laughs> part to, to, his, to his fur, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that, that's got to be refigured out where all those hairs go. So, yeah, there's... Um, oh, wow. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> so you got to analyze. You got to analyze not only what the pattern was from the film itself, but you also have to know enough about the the hair assignment to make sure that the right color hair goes in the right spot, so that when it lays down, yeah. it creates the correct pattern. Yeah, that's a <laughs> lots and lots of reference so, photos, right? <laughs> yeah, from from a thirty year old film that you know. Yeah. There are just right. plenty of high res images out there of. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. 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 And, then, um, <laughs> and then so talking about. So uh, I don't think anything is ever fully gone. Yeah. Um. So I'm. I'm gonna. We'll go back to. We're gonna talk about a couple more things, James. But thank you very much, Nick, for about talking about uh, the restoration piece. <laughs> um. And we'll. Uh, yeah, you bet. We'll check in with you in a little bit. Um. For those that are watching the channel, Nick is uh, a regular and a very big supporter of the channel, and actually a partner in the channel who helps us uh, find a lot of content as well. So we'll, you, you'll be seeing him as well. And check out Nick. Do you have a website or something that can check out your, your your work? I just have my Facebook and my Instagram. Uh, Facebook is uh, Nick J. Benson official and Instagram is at Nick Benson 427. Right on, right on. We'll see. We'll catch up with you in a little bit, my friend. <laughs> All right. So, um, and then, so uh, James, I guess the, the last couple of questions I have are, um, you know, with the society and I know you have, you have ways to view all this stuff, like how, um, if the, if the apocalypse gets canceled, which it should, um, what, uh, how do people see these items um, either on the web or in person or in traveling road shows or in cons? Like what, what's, what's the possibility to see some of this awesome stuff? Uh, I, I really hope that possibility comes back. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause without conventions, we really don't have much outside of spooky swirls uh, where we, we do have a, a permanent, rotating exhibit um about 200 some items like right now if if we were open you could see you know uh, a, a full display of of almost everything from silent hill um right i think i, I think i saw some there. promo photos of pyramid head a little bit ago so yeah yeah that was uh <laughs> that one's actually there but that that was a, a hush hush thing because that was shot <laughs> back in july uh, oh. but it's it's airing in april so <laughs> yeah yeah right, well we'll, we'll, we'll do, I'll do i'll cut that oh off. no 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 hush hush is uh, yeah <laughs> it's not not like legal legal hush hush but <laughs> all right <laughs> all right well you know, yeah it's, it's, it's no it's it's yeah so it's <laughs> 
Pyramid Head is from um, Silent Hill. It, he just said Silent Hill. Okay. It'll it'll <laughs> have aired when when the bef- uh, prior to this airing too. So cool. no, the the hush hush is is that in, in Collector's Call uh, is the name of the show. It's on MeTV. Uh-huh. Um, and that's an upcoming and show, they, by the way. They, um, we were talking about it earlier. So, uh, James yeah. and a lot of these props and the society itself has an appearance um, in Collector's Call, which is coming up very soon uh, this week and, and ongoing. Yeah, it, and it, it's hosted by Blair from Facts of Life, oh, which wow. is fun. <laughs> and um, the uh, so the the whole thing in it is is that there's an expert that that's evaluating your stuff, you know. And, there's, <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens on the show because as, as we talk, one of the things I hate the most is putting value, actual number values sure. on everything. And that's just of their show. So every time they're, they're asking like what, what I paid for something, what, you know, and I'm, I'm just looking at it and going, I don't know, you know, <laughs> or, or where did you get this? And the story I, I, I kept telling is is like i i met a guy at midnight in a parking lot and it was foggy <laughs> you know so i'm 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 He's curious like a to see a fedora <laughs> he, handed me, he handed me a bunch of funny part is, and an envelope <laughs> the, the funny part is hands. though that actually happened a couple times <laughs> um <all> right <laughs> um so at the end of it the the expert that's there to talk about it is is to tempt you to trade one of your items for something he brought and the item that he brought is a pyramid head so i already had one but this was from part one mm. so the the shh, don't tell thing is that i went with the trade because it's <laughs> destroyed now at, at spooky swirls um <laughs> that was a long time for, right <laughs> yeah 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 yep. nice yeah. so um however i also have three books um HSPPA volume one, two, and three. And uh, Pyramid Head, the, the first one is in volume two, I believe it is. Um, okay. Nick was also part of, of uh, volumes two and three, uh, where he talks about um, some of the props that he worked with and, and worked on, and, and he even shares one of the props that he has himself. So those books. Uh, the way I describe them is if you can't make it to an HSPPA show, it's kind of like having the HSPPA in your living room. Uh, they're kind of coffee table sure. books and it's not just images of the stuff. Uh, what it is, is me and my other curators talking to you about the pieces, what it means to us, something about them the stories involved with them because it's about the filmic history not not just the item you know we're not creating a catalog we're creating an experience so that's what those books are um and there's three of them they're all on amazon so you know i know they're still delivering during this <laughs> <laughs> might, take, might take a minute but it'll it'll yeah. be it'll get there for sure um, I think, yeah, yeah, that's no, but that's uh, that's awesome yeah. because I think that those books, you know, preserve a lot of history. And we were talking about the value of things and everything else, and you know, there's no greater value than cultural and historical. And for a lot of these people, a lot of people, these films are not, um, they're not just films. They're not just you know B movies, no, C movies. Even if they're even if they're, they're pieces of us, right? They're yeah, all personal. They're histories, absolutely right? pieces of us. Yeah, like, like like the story I yeah, just told you I'm, about 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 Swamp Thing. Like I I'm I'm I want to see more about your Swamp Thing props and like and I might have done I might have done the DC Universe version of Swamp Thing the service as well by saying that somebody has to take heart. But like I'm I'm looking for a particular story and I'm not seeing it yet. And so those things, but like that's <laughs> that's how deep it is in my heart. I'm like I you know I have an yeah. emotional investment in what all these other artists and creators have created, and it affects me right. And it's and there's millions of people around the world that are affected in that way. And these these props, you know connect us physically to those moments in time well i can tell you in 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 volume two the hsppa volume two we have the legs i showed you and it's um uh brad zonka who is also part of the hsppa and he also does some of our preservation work he did the work on those legs so it it's a couple pages and it talks about the work that he did and there's photos of the work that he did the progress in there and additionally daniel emery taylor who played the little redhead kid in return of swamp thing 
<laughs> has become part of the HSPPA as well. And he talks about the legs. Um, and it was almost 30 years to, to the, the release of Return of Swamp Thing that we reunited him with the legs. And so he talks about this, this reuniting of... <laughs> with Swamp Thing basically right. for him, you know. So like when, when he first did the movie, you know, he was like knee high to sure. Swamp Thing. And now he's, you know, about waist high, but <laughs> Right. You know, and, well and the Dick, scale Dick must Rock. be must be must be incredible for because it it's like I know I know that like, well you think about I mean, things are that's that's his foot, you know? Wow. I mean look yeah, that's my hand. That's his foot. <laughs> Crazy. So now, is you know, that the costume piece? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! So yeah, because yeah. yeah, I can see like the sock kind of sticking out from the, to connect the ankle. Oh, that, that's okay. So that's part of the the preservation. So I I didn't want anything done to the piece itself. So before oh. we foam filled, we foam filled in garbage bags. Oh well, what about like the so green nothing piece was... at the ankle? Is that the? Oh yeah, that, that part, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I. Sock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that would go up underneath yeah. like the like the pant leg or something, right? Right, yeah, and the pants come down over this. So, and you and you use a garbage yeah. bag to foam fill it to make to give it a structural. Boost well, because of. I I don't want the foam attaching to, the costume. Sure, but the so, foam's so purpose put, inside the costume, is to give it like a struct like to 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 make yeah. it the size that it would be on screen, or to give it structural support. Yeah, well, both? well, to give it structural support so that it it doesn't keep collapsing and and and, you know wear that way yeah yeah is i latex's eventual destiny is is death no matter what you do it's sure. just a matter of how long you can keep it from that yeah <laughs> it sort of it sort of deemulsifies yeah, so, and turns to dust eventually yeah, yeah. so so but it, you know it's there's so much <laughs> um variables at play you know like i, I showed you the bill munn thing that's that's yeah. from 1979, 1980, you know, but, but then there, I have had pieces that have come in complete disarray and, and dust from only like a year ago, you know, I, so there, there's a lot. Speaking of, speaking of other, other, other preservation efforts, you've been to Paul yeah. Allen Sci-Fi Museum in Seattle, I assume? I have not. Oh, I have, you, I've sure. never been to Oregon. Yeah. Or, or it, well, it's, in, it's in Washington State, uh, Seattle, Washington. Oh, uh, at, sorry. Paul Allen from Microsoft is a, is a very well known philanthropist and investor and everything else. So, yeah. Um, but but he built. You're, you're talking about Mopop, yeah. Uh, yes, because they they also have the, the museum yeah. of art and everything, or, or of music yeah. and, and pop music and everything else. Um, and you can see a lot of cool stuff there. But one of the things, the first time I think that was my most intimate first experience seeing a lot of these props myself was seeing his museum. And like I think yeah. the thing that was there that got me was uh, the still suits from Dune. From uh, David okay. Lynch's Dune, yeah. and those still suits, those are all latex over cloth, and like yeah. they're, you know, and you look at them and you're like, wow, they were like they looked really impressive in the movie. They looked really durable and just, you know, you could roll <laughs> around in the dirt and the rock and the sand with them or whatever. Um, probably very the problem not is true. That they did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they did that for six months or yeah. whatever, right? And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they threw them in a closet for sixteen yeah. years, and then they sat right. So when you look at these things. You really see that 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 process of aging, and you see a lot of like the foam rubber pieces, and even like the nylon fittings or whatever else. All of those pieces just you know it takes a lot of work to keep them going, keep them keep them alive through your preservation efforts. So, um, on behalf and, of and some of fans it just everywhere, destined, just well, thank you. <laughs> some of it is just destined to go away. If if you can see this behind me, what's that? I, Do I you see, see that. some pants or a fedora? The pants, yeah, yep. Her, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that Resident Evil? Maybe. Uh no that that's uh, that's KM uh, from Jason X. Okay, the Android. Okay. Yeah. So, if if you look at the the shininess here, here, uh huh. It's her her lady. jumpsuit is is like a a, a pleather. Uh, spandex but that stuff no matter what you do comes off so you can see it's dull on like half of it and it, it just falls off so there's no away. yeah there's there's no fixing that and this is where where problems come in with what do you do um 
like I, I suppose you could recode it, you could do things like that. But once you do something like that, it's no longer what it is. Right. So that's where the preservation restoration concept comes in, you know, of a, a full, like restoring that back to what it was. It's no longer what it was to me anyway. Right. Yeah. See, that's the old adage of like, if you keep repairing something with parts over time, until there's no more parts of the original left, is it still yeah. the same thing? Right. That's the yeah. philosophical yeah. question. Um, <laughs> but, but thank, but, you know, James, thanks you for, thank yeah. you for spending your time with me today um, yeah. and chatting about the society and preservation in general and sci-fi props. And, you know, I hope we yeah, get a chance to talk you. more Absolutely. in the future and especially, you know, let us know if, you know, new items come in or if, you know, the story continues to grow. I'd love to continue talking with you about this. It's a fascinating subject. And if you ever want to talk more yeah. about Swamp Thing, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit now to do that. So <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> love it. Thank you. Appreciate right, it, Jay. Tracy. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks yeah. for all your time and uh, yeah. good luck with all the preservation. Yeah, thank you, and, Nick, for coming on with me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks to Nick for joining us. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we'll be back with more content uh, in this same wonderful film, pop, sci-fi, horror, fantasy ilk here on Near Future Industries. Like, subscribe, nice. and we'll see you very soon.